Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I apologize. I'm not getting used to being in tape like this. But <laughs> uh, my name is Amgad Hussein, actually, and I am the chair of civil engineering. I'm here today to talk to you about civil engineering. I have actually six seniors who volunteered in that role, third from last. Yeah, you can see they are waving to you. These are actually our senior class. They will be graduating in six to eight weeks, right? Yeah. Wow. So I brought them in actually for two reasons. The first one, so you can talk to them. They can talk to you about civil engineering. They have finished all the work terms and they have only a few weeks left with us. And also they will take you on tours to the lab after this one, we're going to have open house in the, in the labs. Also, I brought in just a few slices of pizza in our civil home room, which is in room 2050 across, actually, <coughs> across the corridor. 2050 is our civil home room. Just want you to go into the home room and see what we have actually in it. And you go downstairs, have a quick tour of our labs to see what labs we offer to our with our courses. I'm just going to have a brief talk to you and of course if you have any questions please feel free to ask me afterwards and also ask our senior class. Just here to let you know a little bit actually about civil engineering. This is actually uh, a portrait probably of something you never heard of which is the seven ancient wonders of the world. Some of you might heard about it. It is actually, this one actually is a pain, painting by a Dutch artist who draw all these monuments without even seeing them. He never visited them. But the point here is civilization is defined in terms of big colossal structures. That is what is, that is a part of civil engineering. So what is civil engineering and why is it called civil engineering? <coughs> Going back in history, there was only two types of engineers actually. Military engineers and civil engineers. And hence the names talk as civil engineers. So at one point in time, everyone was called civil engineers. Even the mechanicals, the electricals, and all those terms that appeared afterwards originated as being civil engineers. So civil engineers is civil engineering actually has got many definitions, but the beauty about civil engineering, and beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, I guess, is we have a diverse fields in civil engineering that you can do. Civil engineering is not defined in terms of only one small field, and I will show you some of it. I like actually in definitions uh, what is civil engineering. There is an institution of civil engineers in London, and that is the oldest one. And as you can see, it's the art of directing the great sources of power in nature for the use and convenience of mankind. Although this is actually brief, but it is <clears throat> very few strong words actually that are very revealing. We as civil engineers simply pride ourselves that we build the quality of life. You think if just your regular day, you wake up in the morning, there's a roof on top of your head that is made by civil engineer. You go drink some water from the tap, this water came at your house by civil engineer. Then you go to the washroom, flush it, that sea which goes also by civil engineering. Then you get into your car, drive on the road, that road is built by civil engineer. So we actually have great impact on the quality of lives. If you Think of what we built. This is just, as I told you, we built buildings, roads, dams, airports. We 
build water treatment plants, we build <coughs> housing, we build sanitation, we build airports on which, <coughs> and on which planes land. We are basically builders by nature. That's what we are as civil engineers. You look at some of the type of work or products that we produce, for example, this is one that is related to energy, to clean energy that we do. This is simply power stations and dams. These dams are built by civil engineers. Some of them has to build actually or the structure of the dam is built by civil engineers. The water flow on top of the dam, which is hydrotechnical area, is also built by another civil engineer. This hydroelectric dam. Also, if you look even at all other sources of clean energy, you will find actually the hands of a civil engineer in it. Another one which is very important is branch, is actually environmental engineering. Environmental engineering takes raw water, treats it, and gives you drinking water. Takes the sewage, and you can see the sewage plant. Of course, I will talk to you afterwards. It also has to do with pollution and pollution mitigation in environmental engineering. Air pollution, for example, <coughs> any pollution in the soil. We have what we call environmental geotechniques for remediation of what materials that is harmful that is left in this soil. We also do all kinds of stuff to do with environmental engineering, environmental assessment, environmental impact study. If you build a big project, it is definitely going to have an impact on the environment in which it is built. All these are parts actually, but this is, uh, I will talk about it again. Also, all the transportation systems, and don't think of transportation systems only in terms of the pavement that we build. We do way more than that pavement. We actually look at the transportation in terms of capacity. Each road, what would be the capacity of the roads? What would be actually even, believe it or not, the traffic lights in that road? What are the exits and the ramps and all that? All this is designed by civil <coughs> engineers, which is part of our transportation systems. Of course, and this is uh, my area, we build all kinds of structures, either big or small, skyscrapers. This is a coastal structure. This is a bridge. This is actually an apartment building with a little bit funny shape, as you can see. You can see here actually all these transmission towers. All these structures are designed actually by civil engineers. What else do we do? We also, as I mentioned, do all cleaning up environmental mitigation, <coughs> air pollution, water pollution, land pollution. All this as part of the whole branch actually of environmental engineering, and let no one tells you otherwise, is a branch of civil engineering. That is how it started. And actually, if you look through the internet, for those of you who are interested in environmental engineering, and look at other universities, what you're going to see, Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. So <laughs> here, we do not have this one, but we offer actually the most courses in environmental engineering. And um, when it comes to the courses that we offer, I would show you that one actually in some slides. I just want you to have a taste of what we do and how diverse we are. This is only some <coughs> of the areas that we work in civil engineering. We work coastal and oceans coastal and oceans structures, interestingly, in this area, it is taught 
by a professor actually who has taught you when you were in term one. I'm sure some of you took course design course with Dr. Bruno. Some of you did, I would assume. Yeah, he is the professor who teach actually coastal and oceans. Another just another professor in civil engineering who has taught you in first year engineering is Dr. Asim Hassan who taught some of you statics I would assume. So these are civil engineering profs. These are the only two who teach for first year engineering. So coastal and oceans, environmental, structural, construction, of course, construction belongs to us as civil engineers. We construct all types of projects and structures that we design. So one, one engineer, civil engineer, would design the structure. Another civil engineer would construct it. So there's also another very interesting branches, such as geotechnical engineering. And our application is not limited to certain type, actually, of construction or certain type of design. It can range. It has a very wide range, as I showed you. Dams, offshore structures, platforms, buildings, all that. This is some of the, there's a breakwater structure there. This is some of the coastal and ocean engineering. In addition to the design of all these marine structures, there is some pictures, for example, of some models that we built and study in wave tanks. Uh, this is numerical simulation. This is actual structures that are built in real life. This is all part of what we do as civil engineers. This is actually, as you see, a water treatment plant. This is actually soil remediation. This is actually waste and solid waste management. This is water studies, as you can see. Environmental engineering is a very <coughs> wide field, actually, that we have the most engineering professors, actually, in civil engineering are concentrated in the area of environmental engineering. We have four professors who teach in that area. Structural engineering, it, it takes, actually, all kinds of fancy structures. And this is actually my area of expertise from a simple, actually, this is a suspended bridge. You can see this hemispherical. These are called, actually, by the way, air structures. These structures are supported by air. The pressure that is inside is the one that keeps the roof like this. So we call it air-supported structure. Of course, <laughs> air cannot support anything. But this is called air-supported structure. This is a, a dam, as you can see, I believe that looks like the Hoover Dam to me. This is all kinds, actually. We have also here, now we introduced a, I do not know if some of you, when you were in high school, you, any of you did the bridge competition in high school? None of you. Grade seven. Grade seven, is it? Grade yeah, seven and eight? Any of you did? Yeah, yeah well, we, we have a deja vu. Dr. Hassan actually <laughs> have one for, he runs it during the winter again. And fortunately, fortunately, last year when we ran it here, we have groups from mechanical engineering, process engineering, and one group from civil engineering, and actually fair and square. Uh, the civil engineering won it. It was not fixed. But it just happened that the civil engineering won over all that. We have even one group made of electrical engineers. But they like to do that bridge company. <coughs> Geotechnical engineering actually is something that is very interesting. You know what that one is? And if you recognize it? Yeah, that's what it is. Of course, you know why it's leaning? Because of the soil underneath it. That's why they're trying to stabilize it by injecting 
the soil underneath it. Geotechnical engineering has to do with soil, study of soil. You can see here actually, this is a landslide. You can see what happened in the landslide. This is part that we study in geotechnical engineering. You can see here actually, these slopes of some water pipes that's going to be filled afterwards with earth. This is part also of these that has to be supported. The soil underneath it doesn't have to give. And that doesn't need to be water pipes. It could be oil pipes. It could be all kinds of pipes. That is one of great concern. I'm sure all of you heard about, uh, what is it called? The Great Alaskan Pipeline. Yeah, they have actually one of the most important things that are, they are studying with this one is the geotechnical properties. And if there is any soil failure, what the impact of that would be. You can see also here, you know what this is, is actually? I know that picture quality is not that good, sorry about that. This is driving the pile. This actually driving the piles in the ground. We drive a series of piles in very really weak soil, then we put our structure on top of that pile. I'm sure some of you, it's something very similar. I'm sure some of you have seen a war of structures, <coughs> right? I'm sure. That is similar to actually, similar to that. Water actual resources engineering has to do with the water resource management. We offer courses in hydrotechnical engineering, hydrology, and <coughs> hydraulics and fluids. This has to be to do with the management of water resources. This is another area that we deal with. Of course, construction engineering, this is a part of an offshore structure. As I told you, all the structures designed by civil engineer, it has to be done by construction engineer. The construction engineer has to deliver the project on time and within budget. This is the successful delivery of a project. That is what defines our success. Of course, that's the minimum, the bottom line. If you can drive it ahead of time, that would be excellent. With this budget, wow. But we do all that actually, and we keep monitoring the cost and scheduling. We make schedule for the project. It's gonna start at this day, end at this day. We have to break down the project into so many activities. And we have to study the relationship between those activities that work break down structure. We have to do continuous monitoring of actually the time each activity is taking, the cost each activity is taking, because one activity can have an impact if it is delayed on the acti that following or the following activities. <coughs> that is something that we do as construction engineers. Transportation engineering is a branch of civil engineering, of course, that is very really important. We offer one course in transportation engineering. This actually has to do with designing the roads, the capacity of the roads, and the needs of also other alternative. As you can see, it could be a tunnel, it could be a bridge. All this actually is part of our transportation uh, underneath, uh, with, within it, there is also traffic engineering. We design traffic light, we design traffic flow, we design ramps, off ramps. Whatever you drive on in Trans Canada Highway, there is 10 chances out of 10 it is designed by civil engineer. These are some of the emerging areas in civil engineering. The good thing about civil engineering. We are always go steady. We are not subject a lot to market fluctuating, as you know, in some other areas. Back then, you were very young. There was an actually inform information technology bust and dot com bust in, in the year 2000. They made a lot of companies on the internet and it went bust. A technology goes up and down. Oil and oil prices goes up and down, but civil <coughs> engineers go steady. Why? Because 
Mankind will always need housing, will always need roads, will always need water to drink. They always need that. So therefore, they always need us. Basically, society, in my own opinion, cannot live without civil engineers. That's the way I see it. Some emerging areas, of course, into smart materials. Smart materials, for example, includes materials that are not traditional. If you know, if you ever, any of you seen reinforced concrete, for example. You have seen some rebars, steel rebars, and you put concrete on it. Now they say there's a problem with steel rebars, which is rusting in the exposed structures. So a smart material is fiber reinforced polymer. We made now some rebars out of glass or out of carbon instead of steel. We also, what we have is what we call real monitoring, real time monitoring of a structure. We put instrumentation in it and we see how the structure is deformed. One actually of the most famous well monitored structures is the street crossing crossing bridge. What's the name of that bridge? Between PEI and Nova Scotia. <coughs> Confederation Bridge, yes. That actually bridge is fully monitored. So every deformation, when the wind hits it, they know how much it is deforming it. When the ice hits it, they know how much it is deforming it. This is actually a, something that we are doing a lot now as we build our structures smarter, as we build our structure actually slimmer, we would also like to monitor how that structure are performing real time. Risk engineering actually is some emerging area which is very important. Everything has risk in it. There's a lot of risk engineering application in civil engineering. Also rehabilitation of structures we have a lot of infrastructure, actually, that is deteriorating and deteriorating fast. So therefore, we have to make decision, decisions whether to keep this structure functioning like this or go rehabilitate it means reinforce it and keep it for many years. This is just some of the emerging areas. When it comes to careers, and without just reading, what is there, knock on wood, we have actually <coughs> excellent luck with our graduates finding jobs. We have no problem with that. Most of the time, maybe, <laughs> most of the time, I'm saying most, and you guys have not graduated yet. We actually, our graduates have no problem finding employment. Somebody may not agree with me, but I'm talking about in general. Yeah. We always have that one actually before graduating or slightly after graduating, the majority of our graduates have jobs. We have no problems in this area. You can work in provincial government, you can work in federal government, you can work for consultants, you can work actually in the office designing things, you can work in the field constructing things. You can work actually in different fields. Could be hydrotechnical, could be environmental, could be structural, could be actually even oil and gas. There are many, many fields that we actually have engineers working in. This is actually something that is good. You can also, you never know, never say never, work in an education institute or even one day become a prof. In order to become a prof, after you finish your bachelor, you have to do your master's and then you have to do your doctorate and then you become a prof. So probably, say, seven, eight years after you graduate. So, which is not bad. Another area actually is of course that is good here, which is the offshore oil and gas industry. You can work in it as the, in the subsea area in stress analysis, stress design. There, you can work in the construction. I just came actually from a visit in Hebron, and I found that 
I came to know or I taught at least 60% of the Kiwit engineers who were there. I never walked more than 20 feet without someone saying hi to me. <laughs> so, let me actually show you some of the structures that were actually designed and built in here. <coughs> I have two or three. This is, of course, the one before Hebron. This is the Hibernia GBS. And they started construction in 1993 when I was actually started my doctorate thesis. And they built it actually the dry dock in Bullard. That's where exactly we were building Hebron in the same dry dock. That's where I was last week. And after that, actually, it was towed. Then a meeting between the bottom side and the top side were made. And then it was towed to its final place. The difference between the Hibernia site and the Hebron site is in the ice walls. It has sawtooth here, while actually the Hebron has actually a curved, like an arch type uh, structure. They are both designed for actually different ice structure interaction scenarios. Another one actually of the project that we have here, of course, the Riverhead Wastewater Treatment Facility at the south side, as you know. For that one actually, they excavated 800,000 cubic meters of rocks by blasting. That project was done by a company called Olympic Construction. And actually, this is the final one that took them three or four years to build. This is the south side project that we have. Another project, which is old now, is actually, here's some pictures. Maybe you will not see them elsewhere. This is actually during the construction of Mile One Stadium. I'm sure you guys have been to Mile One Stadium. Some of you have been. This is when they are actually having the first pour of the stadium. That's the concourse on which you walk. This is some of the pictures, including actually the, these are how the bleachers came in, and that is the final part of the roof and the steel on top of that roof. And behind it actually is one section on how that the roof truss are designed. See this? I might show it to you as a truss. This actually are the Mount 1 roof trusses that runs across this way. And that is how it is designed. How I know, because actually I'm the one who designed it. And these are my calculations. <laughs> <laughs> I, used, I used to work with a company called Newfoundland Design Associates when I did that before I came back teaching. So let us just talk quickly at a glance at what is actually, this is of course, regardless of what discipline you would join, you would actually have to be first engineering one. Engineering one would take two terms, and for some possibilities, some of you might be able to do a work term first here in the spring of 2014. Some may, some may not, but after that you would alternate, have one term, and then one work term, academic term, work term. I believe the minimum requirement for your passing is four work terms. You have to do a minimum, mandatory minimum of four work terms. And so far, I think, I believe, I'm sure, we have our graduates that our civil engineering students do not have great difficulties in finding work terms. Do they? See? So that is part we are, sorry, so I wouldn't jinx it. We are really good at. You would start actually, and let me, instead of going, maybe it will not me. These are the courses that you would be taking, I'll just go quickly through it. In term three, you would be taking actually a course in surveying and geomatics. You would be studying a course in civil engineering materials, such as concrete, steel, wood, and timber. You would take geology, course in earth sciences, 
you'll have a mathematics for civil engineer, and you will have a course in dynamics. Then you go on a work term and you come back. We have now to start our some of our courses. You will take mechanics of solids, you will take your first environmental science <coughs> course, you'll be taking geotechnical engineering, probability and statistics, and the second math course. You come to term five, actually, you'll be taking the first fluids course, second course in mechanics of solids. Mechanics of solids is about stresses and strains, material behavior. You're going to do your geotech two, and you will take a course in numerical analysis, and you will take a first design course in term five. It is actually design concrete structures one, and that course actually start by Dr. Asim Hassan. In term six now, what happens is before we used to have a general option of civil and another one we an option we called UJ. UJ is oil and offshore gas engineering. Starting 2016 graduate is the last class that <coughs> would graduate from UJ. Uh, however, actually we decided not to get rid of that option, but instead we put it actually in terms of a stream through a series of electives that we are going to offer to our students. So when you guys come in, we will be having three streams, one in structural slash construction, one in environmental engineering, <coughs> and the third stream actually in oil and gas. That curriculum should be approved, and that would be more likely your curriculum should be approved before the end of this term. So if you want to do environmental engineering, you can join. Construction and structure, you can join. Oil and gas, you can also join. So that would actually be our future plan, which is coming very soon. Yeah. Then let me tell you, this is some of the other courses. But also, we have something that is very unique that we offer in our, actually, civil engineering discipline that no other discipline does. And currently, those six students that are, our senior students are going through that, which is actually our capstone project. Let me tell you what is our capstone project is about. We actually, what we do is, in our course, we go and ask civil engineering companies and civil, civil engineering consultants to give us real life projects. So the project that you have is a real project. It's not an imaginary one. It's a real project that will be designed and built. We ask each group, we ask actually each, the students to form groups. Each group actually is made out of four students. That four students form something like a small consulting firm. That consulting firm, in order to be able to present themselves to their clients, who are all of them are engineers who are working for engineering firms, they prepare what we call statement of qualifications. This is actually some of the samples of the statement of qualifications that is required to be prepared by each group, and each group actually would pick a name, something like they. This is a group, then the consultants, and maybe after those guys graduate next year, uh, I will be putting their statement of qualifications in my presentation. Why Dawson? Yes. You don't want that one? <laughs> because they are going through that and they already have submitted their statement of qualifications. Once actually we have a selection process where <coughs> the students are interviewed with the client and they present them with their experience, the client asking them, we do matching. We call this one matching night. Once the groups are matched, they go and do the design of course with the guidance of their clients and they have questions, they come to us for resources. And then what is required from the students? 
that is actually what is required from the students to produce at the end. They are supposed to design the project. After they design the project, they give us engineering drawings for that project. These are engineering drawings actually by some of our students. And they have to, cost, to give a cost estimate. These actually need not to be only a building. If we have in our project this year parts on offshore structure, parts of marine structures, and it is very diverse. This year, as we are running, as we speak now, we have 10 groups in term eight. 10 groups are designing 10 different projects. We are very proud of that one, actually, as it is unique. We have also some other universities, such as University of Ryerson. In 2008, they decided to adopt a project similar to the format that we give it. So this is something actually that we are very proud of. And you do that in your term eight, it's called the Civil Engineering Project. This is another actually, uh, this is another some of the design that you have actually. This is, a, this is the project. This project actually, it's very interesting, and that's why we show it. That project actually, I believe, cost three or four million dollars to build. Our students produced an estimate that was less than $100,000 difference between the actual cost and the four million dollars cost. They came that close. It's something that we are actually very proud of. And A and E Consulting, actually A and E Consultants is a, is a consulting firm. This is another example that is produced actually for <coughs> birth a, of a marine terminal at the St. Lawrence. And these are conceptual design and actual designs of it. And here are the drawings. These are just a variety of uh, this is actually designed on spillway, as you can see. This is the flow chart for the design of the project schedule, and this is the part of the final group project. What I want to tell you here, we have a diverse types of projects, and it is actually very, very interesting to do. Right, Termin? So, Anyways, this is just a very brief, I do not think I did civil engineering justice because it's much bigger than the half hour that I spent with you. So, thank you.